One No Treble, this is Ari, and today we're gonna rock out. Um, Aerosmith's Sweet Emotion starts with a bass riff that is exposed, there's only a hi-hat ticking away and a little bit of guitar. And it is a riff that can be a little bit challenging technically for some people. So I thought I want to look at this riff in particular and use it as an example of some of the ideas that you can use in order to wrap your mind around a technically challenging riff like that. And I got a bunch of exercises. I have PDF that comes with uh, the episode. And if you're watching this on YouTube, check the link below and download the PDF on No Treble. And let's get started. Let's take a look at the tonal material of this riff. It is made up out of the A mixolydian scale. That is a major scale with a flat seven. So it is played up here though. And then you can um, sort of just, you know, play that scale up and down a couple of times and familiarize yourself with the tonal material. That's a good first step. The riff doesn't use all the notes, but a lot of them. <laughs> the third, the fourth, the seven, and the octave are in this riff. I've clocked out the studio version at tempo 98, so let me play you the riff with the metronome, and it is the second line of your PDF. Now the trick is, you're gonna be in on the top of the song, so it's all you, baby. And you don't get the luxury of having a false start or sort of easing your way into the rhythm. So it's, I think, a good practice to, when you shed it, uh, to approach it with that same attitude. You want to be on it from the very first note. So here we go. One, two. <laughs> some great strategies to help you get a riff like that under your fingers and really practice it. Because contrary to maybe popular belief, just playing this thing over and over and over and over is not going to help you get it under your fingers. You can actually play this for decades and not improve at all. Uh, so here are a few ways to help you pretty instantly feel like it's getting better. Uh, one method that I like to use for riffs like that is what I call fill in. So every time where I have an eighth note, I will just double it up to a sixteenth note and also with the with the uh, dotted eighth note. So what I end up with is a continuous pulse of sixteenth notes and the notes that are part of the riff, they are popping out like I would hear them in the riff itself. So listen, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> continuous pulse um, which helps you shed the subdivision and it keeps the dynamics of the hand in the same challenges it the same um, but it takes out also takes out this rhythmic element that's a little bit hard so great way to do this is to slow down the tempo a little bit like let's go to let's say 75 and practice that <laughs> but keep feeling the subdivision inside. So my inside, I keep still hearing those 16th notes. That is tremendously helpful to tighten up your timing and uh, to um, understand how this riff is supposed to work because you have eighth notes and then you have these two sixteenth notes back to back um, and it's important to get that right so this helps you do that fill in rhythmic next we'll do some rhythm practice basically we're taking elements out of the groove for example this bit of two eighth notes followed by four sixteenth notes and just practice the tonal material with it. And there's a bunch of examples on your sheet. So I will play through those for you. So here is combination one with um, tempo 90. <laughs>
again. Now you could start speeding that up. And uh, if you put that to 98, I bet you can do it. Okay, now the other variation is nothing but the same idea um, of two eighths notes and four sixteenths notes, the tonal material, and now I'm using not the bottom note as a pedal, but the top note as a pedal, because that whole pedaling business is part of what makes this riff so challenging. So let's grab that fact and practice it from all sides. So now we're going to practice it with the upper note even harder. Here we go. One, two, three, four. The next rhythmic combination is the second part of the riff, a 16th note and a dotted eighth followed by four 16th notes. And again, I'm just playing up and down the scale, pedaling with my A, uh, using that same idea from the as from the riff. Two, three, four. <laughs> Now let's do the version with the pedal tone on top. One, two, three, four. Again. Now, more rhythmic ideas to practice this. And this is just going to be all on one note. But again, we're going for rhythmic accuracy and leaving, keeping that subdivision running in our mind is really helpful. The four sixteenth notes straighten us out. They bring us back to that subdivision. And let's try those parts in the groove that do not have that subdivision so that we just practice just thinking it, just feeling it. So I'll play through all of the examples of rhythm shedding. One, two, three. You will see every other bar is called flipped. I call flipping when I take a figure and started with a different starting spot. So you will see that every time the second measure in each line is the same as the first measure, just that it starts on the other foot, so to speak. I will play every line twice. One, two, three, four. The last one, the third one, one, two, three, four. Again. Okay, so what that does is really forces you to be clear on which of the two figures you're playing. You know, are you playing the two eighth notes or are you playing the two sixteenth notes or a sixteenth note followed by the dotted eighth? Or there's another figure that consists out of two notes that could be um, confusing here, which is what I threw in there on the second line actually already. It's the reverse of instead of 16th and dotted 8th, it's dotted 8th, 16th, that's so a mirror image. But um, it's nice to hear the difference between da 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 da. Right now, I played all three of these rhythms in question here, back to back. Two eighth notes, then sixteenth and dotted eighth, and then dotted eighth and sixteenth, which is the mirror image. So, right? Or let me start with the two sixteenth notes, or sixteenth dotted eighth. It's just good to have clarity where the subdivision is. All right, the last one of the rhythmic shenanigans here uh, features 
all of the three rhythmic figures that we actually have in the groove. So that's all four sixteenth notes and the sixteenth notes and the dotted eighth and the two eighth notes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Now here's another idea, and um, this is basically breaking down the riff and looping just two beats out of it. You know? So if you do that for a minute, that's a smaller bit to practice. It's a smaller bit to wrap your mind around, so you'll have a much easier chance, much faster way to, to get it accurately. Now let's do the same thing with the second part of the riff. So hopefully this will give you a few ideas on how to approach a difficult riff. Come up with your own ways of practicing them. There are myriads of them. So flipping is one, you're breaking it down into small bits, filling in, creating all 16th notes even if there aren't even if there are longer notes. What that does is it engages you to relate to that riff in a new way and it gets you there way faster than just over and over beating your head against the wall and trying to make it better by not playing it exactly well. So um, another uh, trick of course is to slow it down but even when you slow it down I would recommend you use the fill-in method or some of these other variations of the riff and not just play the riff itself. You want to get fluidity and understanding of what it is that you are playing here and breaking it down and creating exercises like the ones I just showed you really does that for you. All right, I hope the emotion is real sweet at this point. <laughs> I thank you for watching. Um, I'm Ari, I'm at arispaceblog.com. I got courses out, I've written a book, Music Theory for the Bass Player. Please check it out, subscribe to my blog. You get free um, bass educational content every week. And let me know in the comments how you're doing. I always love to hear from you. Thank you very much, cheers. <laughs>